What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Nick Wynn, back at it again with Sliced Basics. This time, we're going to be doing some modeling. And uh, if you've watched Slice, if you've watched some Slice episodes, you'll know that you get the most points when you do uh, really well on the modeling portion of Sliced. So you can get the most points. Uh, it's all or nothing in terms of the points for, for modeling. And the object is to get either the, the best accuracy, most accurate model predictions, or... Uh, the lowest error or the lowest loss uh, for your predictions. Um, it's pretty basic over the course of uh, the uh, the pilot season. Uh, not a lot's going to change in terms of how we'll be evaluating targets in the in the next season and the seasons after this. Uh, for the most part, it's going to be still pretty simple. You really are trying to beat the clock, and so. Uh, we're not trying to make it too much more difficult on everyone. With that said, people have come into difficulties even with some basic modeling. And so tonight we'll just go over some simple modeling techniques you can use uh, to get you ahead of the curve and keep you on the, uh, the path of success being a good competitive contestant on Slice. This also helps if you're not necessarily a contestant on Slice. If you're looking to do stuff more quickly or build models more uh, quick and accurately uh, you might be able to use some of the information in this too so let's get started oh my goodness wow no one in chat actually spammed emotes this is this is actually very i thought there was even going to be more emote spam but there isn't if you're interested in watching this live by the way youtube uh, we're over on Twitch. We start streams at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, you can find the link down below here somewhere. Okay, let's get going. Um, this notebook is also linked down there. You can find the GitHub, the Colab notebook, and all the data. Uh, feel free to run this yourself. Okay. We have the same data set we were working on with, from the exploratory data analysis. We'll just keep using that. This is from season, uh, from the pilot season, episode one. This is um, uh, speed dating data. We took a look at the other stream over the data dictionary and how we approached some of the exploratory data analysis. Uh, we won't be going through, through that. We're just going to choose some of our features and uh, create some simple models to start. So let's do that. First, let's import some of uh, some scikit-learn information. So we'll, uh, from uh, scikit-learn, let's import, and remember, we're trying to predict in this case, uh, the match columns. This is a, uh, uh, a binary column, so we'll be using classifiers in this case. In our linear model, uh, from linear model, we'll grab logistic regression, and then we'll also bring in um, uh, random force classifier. So. Um, the first thing I'll want to do is remember modeling uh, there are some fundamental things you want to do in machine learning. One of those things is making sure that your um, your model is valid and you're not necessarily overfitting on anything. So one thing we'll do is we'll just identify the columns we'll want to use in this data set. You can see there's uh, 120 columns based off the uh, shape we had when we first loaded in this data set. We know from the exploratory data analysis video that a lot of these features um, here all correlate strongly with match. And then all of these same features that end with underscore O also have some correlation. Uh, these come from the the uh, attraction. Do you, Are you attracted to your partner sitting across from you? Uh, so we'll use those same features and create a simple model. <laughs> welcome back, S rule. I shouldn't really like welcome back anyone right now, right? Like, that's, <laughs> like YouTube doesn't understand 
uh, this channel's live memes. Right? So we'll throw these into something called feats, which will be uh, our features. Uh, I think attraction, sincerity, intelligence, fun, ambition, and shared interests. Those are the six things we want. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. So we'll take all those and we'll also uh, have a list comprehension it's for X in blah, blah, blah. Um, and then we'll... Um, F string this and put an O on everything, and then we'll add back feats. So in the end, uh, we'll have the stuff that is with the person across from us, the person we're on a date, on a speed date with, and then our rating of that same person. Our as in the target person. Um, okay, so we have features. And the target is going to be match. So we have our information set up already. The first thing we'll want to do is for model data, we'll want to drop all the values that don't exist in this feature set. So we'll take features and we'll take our target and we'll uh, drop NA. So that leaves us with uh, 4,000 columns as opposed to 6,000, or 4,000 rows as opposed to 6,000 rows uh, because of the amount of null values in our data set. And that's fine. Now, if you are just uh, doing this in the sliced way and you know that there is a holdout set, we should actually import that holdout set. Let me. Uh, make sure yeah so there's this holdout set here so we'll just uh grab this and import that as a as a uh, data set as well so this holdout set is given to all the slice contestants they all get uh the the holdout set and they have to predict everything on uh, using all the features in the holdout set they're the same features as in your big uh, data CSV, in this case, the 6,000 rows that we have here. Uh, this is just a cut, a subset of that data. And we're just trying to predict whether or not the people in this data set that's held out, whether they're gonna match. So we'll load that in. Okay. Okay. So this has all the same rows, except a few of them are taken out. And if you read the documentation, you can see at the very top, in the holdout data, you will not have the following columns. Okay. Well, done deal. And this makes sense because match is what the, what the target is. And decision, if they both say yes, if the decision is yes on one side and yes on the other, then that is a match. Um, so you can see right here that the holdout data is wave 11, and that's not in the training set. And you can see here, wave 11, this is red x out. So that makes sense too. We are trying to predict on a different night that is not related to any of these other nights. Okay. So we're trying to predict on these 882 rows. We have model data. The easy way to do this is if we make this a uh, logistic regression model and we just take our logistic regression data, we fit the model using model data Now we have a model. We've trained this model on the on the model data. The model data is, has no nulls or anything. 
and we take this model and we do a predict probability and then we take our holdout data use the same features okay so the holdout data also has some nulls so we'll want to expect those you can see here some nulls um, how should we handle the nulls? We could either drop them or we could do some sort of average. Um, might be best if we do uh, just whatever the average is. We don't have enough time to predict these. So let's just fill for call in features. Take that column, fill the NANs of that column with the column mean. Okay. And I just kind of like organizing my, my stuff so if we load in data and we're messing with the main load in, then let's just do it all together at the same time. So now we have this model prediction and you can see that it's an, a numpy array, numpy array, you know, the way you would pronounce it, numpy. So we'll wanna take that out uh, put that through a pandas data frame since we're going to be joining back on a pandas data frame. But also note that uh, we don't want to confuse the indices, right? It's possible that the index might be off. And so just to be explicit about that, we're going to also set our index uh, to have the same index as our as the data we're loading in. Might seem a little you know, simple, but that is, that is the best way to do it. Uh, most explicit way. And then the ones in this case, these are uh, predicting whether or not the model believes it will be a match. And that's what we ultimately want. So we're going to take this and we'll call this preds. Now we have a data frame called preds. Uh, so we don't need this, we just need this first column. These are our predictions. And then we could throw that onto our holdout data set. And we could call this preds. And this would be the most simple way to create your sliced data set uh, with uh, your predictions on them. This would be as simple as it gets. If you wanna go one step beyond uh, say this say the metric was accuracy and not log loss uh, you could just round your predictions and then uh, as type int and then you could call this like uh, preds uh, int so now uh, if we look at all this data, you have these predictions, you have the predictions as integers uh, on all the columns, or on all the rows, all 882 of them. Now, something y'all don't know, which, um, let me grab here is how we would do this on sliced, what this would look like. Um, and if I could scroll down accurately, we can get the slice, the actual holdout data that we use if I can find it. I don't know where this is. 
Sliced holdouts. This must be it. Oh yeah, it is. A slice holdout. Okay. Um, let me upload this. Okay, so here's our holdout full data set. This is the true uh, uh, holdout with targets. Uh, read CSV. Ah, not clipboard. You can see the difference is the columns, right? So in this, we have 120. That's the same as the amount of columns that's in the original data frame that has all the training data. The whole outset has three less columns. Those three less columns are noted here. Here are the three less columns that you won't have in the holdout. And for me, when I'm judging this, I use, again, the subset of data. We'll take the... Let's just take a look at what this looks like. Okay, it looks like all the indices are the same. So we'll take um, my predictions, which are coming from this holdout. We'll merge them. We only need uh, the preds and the preds int. We'll left index as true and we'll write index as true, bring all of that information in. We'll make this look a little nicer too. Okay. Now when we look at our target, uh, actually we could do it all here, our preds and our preds int. Here's what actually happened in the match. Here's our predictions. And then here's our integer version. So if we wanted to see accuracy. Okay, now let's load in some model metrics from scikit-learn, metrics, import. Let's go log loss, and then we'll also go accuracy score. So we wanted to use log loss on this, Good, sorry. It's pretty good. So here's our log loss, given our predictions, uh, 0.306. And here's our accuracy, given our integers, which is 87% accurate. Um, what does this mean for y'all? Well, this is, again, the simplest way to make a model. And this didn't take more than, you know, if I wasn't, I guess, talking and, and elaborating on things, this might take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes for you, or at least for me, to get through all of this. And it's not a lot of lines of code to get to the point where uh, I've made the predictions. And then from here, after these predictions, you would send them in to the hosts, me and Meg, and then we would verify whether or not your your scores are better or worse than the other contestants. Uh, but it doesn't stop here because this is the most simple approach, right? This is literally take the data that you have, throw it into a linear model or a logistic regression model in this case, and cross your fingers that this is correct. But is that a good way to do this? Most likely, no. So let's present a few other ways that we could do this uh, that might give you a little more advantage or edge when it comes to model validity. Uh, that, who knows, maybe you could take this with you and, and use it in Slice. Maybe you could take this with you and use it 
uh, on your, your own hobby projects out there. So let's first start with some uh, cross-validation uh, with logistic regression. Just to see how our, our stuff is looking. And let's move some of this up like this. Okay. Now do a ML model predicting how many views this will get. <laughs> okay. Okay. If uh, you are familiar with Sliced and you're also familiar with some of the contestants, you may see some of those names uh, down here in chat. Again, we are live on Twitch doing these uh, 8.30 to whenever we finish them. So come hang out if you have the time. <laughs> Cross-validation with logistic regression. So there's a few different ways you could do this. Um, the, the way that I'm going to show is maybe a little more uh, explicit. I'm personally not completely comfortable with letting scikit-learn pipeline do everything for me. So I'm about uh, I'm going to show you a way to do crossfold validation that mixes uh, pandas and scikit-learn together. Uh, so bear with me, but you can definitely do this with strictly just scikit-learn. And if it's not faster, it's definitely a lot less lines of code. First thing we need to load in is model selection. Um, And we'll load in uh, a couple different K folds. So we have our K fold and we'll have a group K fold. And I'll elaborate on this in a second. So we'll set our K fold to be just uh, K fold, I don't know, 10 is probably fine. We don't have a ton of data. And we'll make sure we shuffle through this. And then we have our model data already. What's this here? We have our model data already from up here. Um, but just to be explicit, let's move all of this stuff down. And then we'll make the loop. Train index, test index, uh, in our kfold split, we'll throw in our model data. Okay, is that correct? Why is this doing this? What am I missing? I'm missing, something is missing. Oh! For, not from, yes. Correct. Thanks, Zbrow. Uh, in this case, we'll use iloc because the way that it pulls uh, indices from scikit-learn, it does it through, not through the pandas indexing, it does it through uh, numpy, just uh, positional indexing. So we'll need to use positional indexing or uh, integer-based location, or not integer, uh, in, in, what does I stand for in iloc? I always like relate it to the index position and not like the label position. Regardless, maybe someone in the comments section below on youtube.com will let us know. So here's our train test. We'll fit the model just like we did before. And then we'll also copy that prediction here. Oh crap, I didn't do that. Uh, let me do that real quick. Ah. 
I knew I was forgetting something. I knew I was forgetting something. Okay, all fixed. So now we'll have this and we're predicting on the test data set in the crustable. And we'll call this preds. And one thing we'll want to do is we'll want to append all this to a bigger data frame with all of our predictions. So this is a pretty simple way to create a crossfold, in this case, uh, 10 folds across a data set, in this case, the model data set. We split our data into test and train. So 90% of the data is in the test or in the training data set. 10% of it will be in that test data. This will fit on the training data. So all the data um, in the training set is not in the test set. We predict on the test set and we save those predictions. And then we append all of the test data into a new data frame. So all of the times we iterate through, we're saving the out of sample predictions. So the training data doesn't know anything about the test data, theoretically. Okay, and this is apparently wrong. Cool, oh, that's right. Uh, we need to grab only that column indexed as one for the predictions. <laughs> uh, you'll get this. This is a setting, a setting with copy warning. If you want to read more about that, you can. Uh, basically, it's a difference between whether this is a view or whether this is a copy of a data frame. In this case, it uh, doesn't necessarily matter too much. So now we have all of our out of sample predictions, and we have those predictions here, and we've trained on all of the testing data set. Now, what does this allow us to do? Well, remember that we don't know log loss and accuracy. If we just straight up train the model on all the data and we predict, we don't know if these predictions are good or not because our holdout data doesn't have our target column, which is match. Because it doesn't have our target column, we'll never know our accuracy. So another way we could do this is splitting our data set a bunch of times, training data with and without certain rows, and then comparing our predictions back. So we can now take this accuracy and log loss thing we wrote before, replace all these things, let's say we have target, and now we could do this with preds. Instead of preds int, I'll just do a simple round and then as type int here. And you see our accuracy now and our loss. So our loss is 0.365 and our accuracy is uh, 85%. Uh, here, if we just train all the data, it's a lower loss, higher accuracy. So this is sort of a, uh, a difference between uh, the, the training set and the holdout set. You're always gonna see somewhat different results because of how uh, how the data may be in the holdout. It's completely unknown. You have no access to it. Whereas the data that you have available to you to train your models might have uh, some variation and may, may or may not be worse than what your, your actual holdout data set may contain. So this is one way we could do this is using uh, crossfold validation and then seeing, are we close with this model? So using a tenfold cross validation, using out of sample predictions, testing them back on our data set because we have all the targets in our training set. So are, is this good or not? Well, another way we could use this is test against a different crossfold validation metric. So we'll just make another crossfold validation metric here. Uh, instead of using kfold, let's use group kfold. Use group kfold. 
And one reason we might want to use group K fold is if uh, there is some information about the different wave numbers. So you could see wave number here, and these are all different dates. Uh, these are all just different times people came in to do speed dating. And so we get this information from the data dictionary here. And I'm seeing that we've dropped five of them. There's 21 of these. You do the math. That's 16 dates. So maybe we could cross fold through this. I don't know, four times. Do a four fold. Um, and I think it's called wave. Oh, model data doesn't have this. Okay, so we're gonna need to include wave in our model data set. Wave, there we go, wave. Okay. That shouldn't change anything. This should all be the same. The same. Now the model data has, should have. Oh no, I made model data here. Wave. Do it again. This shouldn't change. The same. Uh, slightly different numbers because every time we go through this, this is a random shuffle of 10 folds. Uh, but gen generally speaking, this is the same. Now when we look at the head, we'll have wave. And now we use that wave to our advantage. So groups, model data, wave. So now this will use the wave uh, column. Uh, to cut through, and we'll group certain waves together, hopefully randomly, but maybe not. Then we just shove this through. Okay, this didn't work. Wave. Did not have wave in here? Oh, shit, it did. Okay. Okay. So now we can take a look at our features and you can see since it all went through, this is all basically the same. Let's take our log loss and accuracy and take a look. So did this change at all? No. Uh, basically uh, this crossfold validation and this look functionally equivalent. The accuracy is within the same range. Log loss isn't really different from each other off by some really small value in the scheme of things. So although this didn't work here in terms of improving model accuracy or anything, it does provide us with uh, a way to test our data set within the same model two different ways. One with a random shuffle, completely random. That's this k-fold. And then one uh, with a little more uh, control for the different dates. In this case, each wave is a different date that people were speed dating on. Maybe there's some information there that, that is important. In this case, in terms of modeling and prediction, it wasn't. So this is all good and, and fine, but what about uh, more powerful models in general? Let's take a look at random forest. Forced for for rest. Okay. The nice thing about um, the nice thing about scikit-learn is how interchangeable and easy a lot of these things are. In this case, random forest classifier is literally just the plug and play. Switch out one model for the other, and when you run through this. Um, Although it takes a little longer because uh, the model itself is uh, a, a little a little different, not exactly linear. 
Uh, and you could read about Random Forest probably somewhere else, maybe on Ken G's channel. Does Ken G talk about Random Forest modeling? Probably. And you can take a look at the Preds now, now that we ran through a Random Forest. Again, because everything is basically set up the same way, except the only thing you have to do is swap in a new model type, we're going to have everything functionally looking the same. But on uh, on the underneath, it's a completely different thing. In this case, a random forest or a, um, uh, a non-linear model type. So we can shove this through our accuracy and loss again, and uh, what happens? You can see that the uh, log loss in this case is, again, the same, and the accuracy is also the same. Uh, this has no real difference from the other model type. So we're getting log loss and accuracy scores that are relatively similar. Actually, the loss scores here are low or higher than the loss scores from a linear model. So it's possible that using a more uh, powerful or nonlinear model for this particular problem is not advantageous. You do the same thing here. Uh, Instead of using kfold, we could use group kfold. This is four of these. And we'll say groups, again, model data, wave. And this should run through. Doing a lot of copy and pasting. If you were a smart person, you would not copy and paste you would probably make functions for all of these things. Um, using this with respect to the date or the, the wave of the speed date, the loss is not better, the accuracy is not better, and of course the random forest, as we said before, wasn't better than the linear model in this case, in either example. So these are two ways you could actually like generate models pretty quickly, like over the course of the last 30-ish minutes, we were able to develop not just one model type, but two model types in two different ways, one using a tenfold cross-validation and one using not a tenfold cross-validation. Uh, so, or one using a tenfold cross-validation, one using a group-fold cross-validation. Now, Ultimately, again, uh, what to do when you're you're done with all your model va validation, model selection, um, predict on the holdout. And we did this in the first pass, but let's just do this again now that we have all this new information. We ran this model, this model was worse than this model. We ran this model, this model was worse than these two models. The better version of this model seems to be this form of it. But since both of these are using the same model type, logistic regression, then we can sort of just say, let's just train a logistic regression model. And then predict on the sliced holdout So here's the model that we're fully trained on all the data. We're bringing in the holdout data set. We're predicting on that holdout data set now. And yes, the reason it's looking like this, a lot of copying and pasting from before, is because we did this already. This was the first thing we did. Now we have all our predictions, and then we would submit our predictions to a designated folder for the host to take and run their crossfold validation on. Sounds good? Yes, no? Everyone with me so far? If this was a little fast or if you wanted to, you know, go through some of this stuff again, I would say uh, down here somewhere, there's links to this notebook. It's on GitHub. It's on uh, it's in Google Colab. Feel free to clone it and mess around with it yourself. The data is also down here. Uh, you could uh, grab the data for yourself, play around with it, 
Uh, the data set is from Kaggle. Shout out to Kaggle for hosting all this data for us. And if you really like this content and you're interested to see this in action in a competitive setting, uh, come around Tuesdays starting June 1st uh, and check out Sliced, our competitive data science show. Uh, if you liked any of this at all, uh, hit the like button down there. And if you really liked it, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe. And it'd be really cool if we saw you live. So find us on Twitch, not just Tuesdays, but Mondays through Thursdays as well. 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Say goodbye, chat. This is, this is your moment to spam with emotes, chat. This is your moment. This is your moment. I, it's, if no one wants to spam, there you go. Here we are. Bye, YouTube. Say bye, chat. Say, say bye to YouTube, chat. Bye, chat. Okay. Good job, Suri. Okay, bye.